Grandpa said he worked with a Lamaus. Ask me stuff. Grandpa worked for the US government. I don't know what his exact role was, but he died last month of cancer. And during the last few weeks of his life, he spilled the beans on some stuff regarding alien shit to me. I don't know if it's real or just an old dude on his deathbed pulling my leg. I love Gramps. I have some time to kill. Ask me anything. Just to start off, here's a few random tidbits of Gramps lore. Some of this is pasting from a Google Doc that I made of everything, so the writing is a little more formal here. Majestic, or MJ-12, from conspiracy theories and stuff, is not real. It's an OP used as a distraction. The US government has a huge hand in UFO conspiracy theories and such. Several prominent UFOologists on their payroll. Greys are the first aliens he met. He was told this is because they're already so ubiquitous in popular culture, to the point where they pretty much cease to be an alien. So it's the easiest and least unsettling alien to meet. He said it would be shocking how accurate our popular depictions of them are, if not for the fact that their description was an intentional leak in preparation for the disclosure event that was to occur in the 1980s. Was being the operating word here, because it never fucking happened. Reagan prevented disclosure in the early 80s. There was too much money to be made, and large corporations can't benefit from making ET tech available to public. Some ET tech has made it into the private sector, Gramps wouldn't say though. Greys are artificial, but also organic. This is why some people have reported that something is wrong when they are face to face with them, like they don't belong. This is because of some sort of uncali vani kind of effect going on, because we are looking at something that was not the result of the natural processes of evolution, but of careful genetic engineering. Don't get me wrong, they're not robots, not in the way we think of robots. They are fully organic. You ever see Blade Runner? They're like the replicants. They're robots, but they're flesh and bone. No idea. I was told he worked for government, but he had a degree in engineering. Depends on the species. The greys are weird as fuck, because they're not real in the sense that we are. They're not organically made. Greys were created by a race that we call precursors to be worker drones. Precursors were a highly advanced civilization originally from the Zeta Reticuli. Went extinct only a few thousand years ago, and left behind these little guys. Because they can't reproduce sexually, greys use cloning. But because the tech they're using belongs to the precursors, and they've been created for very specific tasks, with limits to learning and creative abilities, they don't quite understand it. Just how to use it. So they're still figuring it out. The way Gramps explained to me is that they can't create stuff, so everything they have is made by a more advanced race, and they just know how to maintain it. So they're advanced, yes, but not like how we would say a civilization is advanced, where they're able to create new tech. I mostly know about the Greys. Gramps didn't go into too much detail about the others. Hmm, that's a hard one because so much of what we know about UFOs and aliens and shit from popular culture and conspiracy theories has kind of prepared us for it. Like, it's not surprising at all when he told me that the US government turns a blind eye to fucked up shit that the A. Lamaus do. But they did try and prevent it, with a treaty that Eisenhower signed, but they broke it really fast, because the Greys didn't think they had to follow the treaty. They don't give a shit about anything. The treaty basically said, we provide cadavers for their genetic stuff that they're doing, and they leave live people alone, and that didn't last at all. The stuff that kinda got me is that the US government started actively abducting people and working with greys on their experiments sometime around the 70s. That's where the Dolce based rumors, mostly fake and gay but some truth there, started. Oh and before I forget, let me just lay out the other species for y'all, pasting from my good old Gramps Google Doc I made. The Precursors, who are extinct. The Greys. The Draco. Original Terrans. 
Draco is the name we gave them. Their true name is unpronounceable. The Zetans, from the same system as the Greys. Grey physiology is based on them, often referred to as praying mantis aliens. Zetans are not much more advanced than us, save for the introduction of Grey precursor tech a few hundred years before us, and the Nordic, a group that calls themselves Eta, which are actually the same as the Tall Whites. Almost nothing is known about them, and they are not as human-looking as others say, nor are they blonde-haired, blue-eyed. Sorry, this is something I don't know. Gramps just said that one day, they met the aliens. Sorry, I know that's lame and a non-answer. Gramps only got specific with some things. Also, he wasn't all there when he was telling me this stuff, but whatever. Depends on species. Most of them come visit. Draco have been around for way longer than we have, and are from here. Some greys and some zetons live underground. I think it might get boring if I just wait for questions, so I'm going to post more from my handy Google Doc. There is no such thing as Dolce Base, at least not anymore. It moved to the Pacific Ocean, in what Grandpa called Pacific Base, but he said it went by a different name. He jokingly said he'd get sniped if he spoke the names. The Greys violated the treaty that Eisenhower had them sign, which outlined sanctioned and unsanctioned procedures. In a nutshell, a sanctioned procedure is anything that the US government has deemed acceptable for the Grey to participate in. At this time, the Greys could only perform these procedures on cadavers and livestock provided by the US government. They had to stop abducting people. They reluctantly agreed to this, mostly just because the Greys do not like inconveniences, even the most minuscule ones. And the US government represented a not insignificant inconvenience to them. Even if our technology was severely behind theirs, they didn't want any trouble, and they wanted to be able to conduct their work the easiest way possible. And us giving them genetic material was a pretty sweet deal for a while. But it fell short of their goals. When asked why they violated the treaty, they were just like, we don't see what the big deal is. It wasn't working out so we stopped following it. Like, they had no concept of what a binding agreement or treaty was. They just did what we asked for a while because it was the easiest way forward for them. And then when they wanted to do more, it was only logical that they disobeyed us. Very focused on pure logic. Makes sense, given their origins as worker drones, without the ability to create. There are ruins on the moon, but no actual settlements. Also, the Soviets put people on the moon first. They all died. Phil Schneider is an OP, like a lot of UFO kooks. Gramps' word, not mine. Some things he said are true, and some are not. Every OP is like this. I don't know about his death, but it was definitely not a natural one. He doesn't have that knowledge, but told me that the Draco, who predate us on this earth, were very interested in our evolution and studied us from the very beginning, trying not to interfere. They thought seeing our evolution would shed more light on theirs, so he thinks we evolved naturally. No clue. He had an engineering degree, and since I was little, they always said he worked for the government. He never explicitly told me what he did, even on his deathbed. We asked a bunch, and he always moved on to something else. My brother and I theorize that he may have some moral conflicts, or be ashamed of what he did. One thing that was interesting was that he knew six languages, so I have floated the idea that he might be a xenolinguist or involved in communicating with the aliens. Name doesn't ring a bell, sorry. The only name he dropped was Richard Dottie. Yes, Antarctica is chock full of stuff that the Draco won't let us touch. They are also really worried about the ice caps melting, because of what's in the ice. Have no clue how his engineering degree played into his work, if even at all. He also spoke six languages, so I wonder if that had anything to do about it. As I said in another post, even on his deathbed, he would not explain his actual job. He just wanted us to know what he learned. No, he was stationed at what he calls Pacific Base. In the ice caps, 
ancient bacteria and viruses, he says. Things that are the reason why the Draco no longer live on the surface. He said there was a hive mind microorganism that the Draco were terrified of. Nothing very exciting. The same deal they have with people. Genetic material. The greys are still trying to figure out how to keep cloning themselves without degenerating. More from my handy dandy Google Doc. If you ever hear a story from someone who claims to have met greys, ask them how they talk to you. If they say anything other than telepathy, they're full of it. But the cat's been out of the bag for a while on that one, so the liars know to say that. They communicate via telepathy, which used to require more than one human present at all times in order to verify, for the record, what was said. They can't direct information to a single person. If you're in their sort of telepathic range, you'll pick up on it. We have developed, with their help, a technology that allows us to record this telepathic communication. So now these groups are no longer needed for record keeping. It's this thing that picks up these waves that contain what they say, and then synthesizes a voice like a radio. Hopkinsville encounter is real. Rogue greys. They still don't know why they did what they did. Reptilians, yes. Running the government, no, Lamau. They work with the government, but they don't really like doing so, so their interactions are limited. When we made contact with Grace, the cat was sort of out of the bag, so they revealed themselves begrudgingly. Yes, underwater crafts are often directly involved with the base in the Pacific, and then the one in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. The Draco want to study us, or so they say. Also, when I say Draco, I just mean the governing body we have contact with. There are other nations and cave systems around the globe that think differently, but I don't know jack about them, except there are some in South America and in Vietnam. The Greys want to use our genetic material. The Zetans are not sure how humanity can be of use to them, so they are cordial. The Eta are worried we're going to destroy ourselves. Gramps was optimistic, but I am not. Based on what happened when Ronald Reagan killed that initiative, I am pretty sure they'll hide it until the aliens up and do it themselves. All he knew about the moon were ruins, and the fact that there were dead Soviets up there when we first arrived. The dead Russians were an accident. By the time we landed on the moon, it had been deserted for hundreds of years. What's the point of visiting Earth? We're way off in the boonies of our galaxy. Aren't there more interesting places to visit? Do the different types of aliens get along with each other? Okay, maybe last one, because this is a good question, and it's another one I asked him directly. The Draco were already from here, and a lot of them still live here underground. The Greys are after our genetic material, and the other aliens followed suit. There are very few sentient alien races out there that they know of. We are all very rare, so naturally, they're drawn to us. The Draco keep to themselves, the Eta are very nice apparently, but he never saw one, or even knew anyone who did. Just that they existed and were interested in our civilization, continuing on to interstellar travel. The Zetans are nice to us, but he thinks it's because they're trying to figure out if they can exploit us. The Greys, are just Greys. Just little guys who don't really have personalities, or culture, or interests or anything beyond the survival of their race. Maybe. He never said how many, but he said there were monoliths on the moon that are remnants from a past colony that didn't really go anywhere. Do not know, but he did tell me that a lot of people probably already know. Some of the A's are concerned about how we are a danger to our own existence, the Eta in particular. Again, he never met or knew anyone who met them, but there was documentation he was made privy to sometime in the late 70s slash early 80s that detailed meetings between the Eta and members of the extraterrestrial intelligence community, which he claims to have been part of. That is literally the most I got out of him in terms of his job and what it actually was. He said they had seen other races like ours die out because of similar things that we are doing to each other and the environment. The Eta pushed for disclosure and democratization of their energy sources in order to fix the issue 
of accelerated climate change, but you can probably guess why Reagan squashed that. Gramps is pretty conservative, but he hates Reagan. Draco biology is similar to ours, as they are from Earth and have a common ancestor, the same one we share with all animals. He doesn't know about the other races. Greys have been using human DNA in their cloning since the 50s, so by now, there is probably some similarities. The greys don't physically speak. The Draco speak in a weird growling clicking speech, but can pronounce English words. But they don't like to speak English, so they use devices around their vocal cords or speakers that translate what they're saying to English. He says he has heard them speak English without the device before, and they had weird sentence structures on top of just sounding like growling. Like, their words all strung together in a singular growl, and they structure their sentences like, if you were to say, I'm going to the store, they would say, go I store. Here's another extract from the Google Doc that I'm comfortable sharing. The US is kind of a big melting pot, so if you're looking for a diverse gene pool, the US is a good place. That being said, of course, we know that some parts of Africa have greater genetic diversity than anywhere else on the planet. But if you're an alien looking for genetic material and see a country full of all types like ours, you're going to think that's a good spot for harvest. The other thing was our weapons and tech were advancing pretty rapidly, and they were observing it. It's not a coincidence that they started upping the ante around the time we developed nuclear tech. They did the same with the Soviets apparently, but due to some issues, they had to stay out of their airspace. Dolce was a base set up by the race known as the Zetans, who began working with greys some time ago, at least a couple hundred years. They are what some people call tall greys, or praying mantis, because they resemble the greys when not wearing their armor. When they are wearing it, they look sort of insect-like. Some people have come into contact with them while they're wearing their more traditional flight suits, and that's where you get the term tall greys, but others prefer to wear armor as they see humans as hostile. So the people who describe praying mantis aliens, they're probably talking about suited up Zetans. So the Zetans and Greys have been working out of Dolce for a while, but prior to Roswell, kept most of their observations of humanity remote and limited to a small area around Dolce. It wasn't until they began catching wind of our advancing weapons tech did they start getting a bit more bold. We first discovered Dolce during Eisenhower's first meeting with the ETs. That's where he met not just the Greys, but the Zetans, and signed the Granada Treaty with the Greys. We are not sure if or what he would have signed with the Zetans, because Granada only covers the Greys, but given the physiological similarities between the two races, we wouldn't doubt he thought they were the same. And the Zetans would love that, because it allows them to scapegoat another group.